The following is the Wikipedia entry for Edgar Allan Poe. It is current as of November 11, 2008. For the text version of this entry, please visit www.wikipedia.org. Edgar Allan Poe, born January 19, 1809, died October 7, 1849, was an American poet, short story writer, editor, and literary critic, and is considered to be part of the American Romantic movement. Best known for his tales of mystery and the macabre, Poe was one of the earliest American practitioners of the short story and is considered the inventor of the detective fiction genre. He is further credited with contributing to the emerging genre of science fiction. He was the first well-known American writer to try to earn a living through writing alone, resulting in a financially difficult life and career. He was born as Edgar Poe in Boston, Massachusetts. Poe's parents died when he was young. Poe was taken in by John and Francis Allen of Richmond, Virginia, but they never formally adopted him. After spending a short period at the University of Virginia and briefly attempting a military career, Poe and Allen parted ways. Poe's publishing career began humbly with an anonymous collection of poems, Tamerlane and Other Poems, 1827, credited only to, quote, a Bostonian. Poe switched his focus to prose and spent the next several years working for literary journals and periodicals, becoming known for his own style of literary criticism. His work forced him to move between several cities, including Baltimore, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and New York City. In Baltimore in 1835, he married Virginia Clem, his 13-year-old cousin. In January 1845, Poe published his poem, The Raven, to instant success. His wife died of tuberculosis two years later. He began planning to produce his own journal, The Pen, later renamed The Stylus, though he died before it could be produced. On October 7, 1849, at age 40, Poe died in Baltimore. The cause of his death is unknown and has been attributed to alcohol, brain congestion, cholera, drugs, heart disease, rabies, suicide, tuberculosis, and other agents. Poe and his works influenced literature in the United States and around the world, as well as in specialized fields such as cosmology and cryptography. Poe and his work appear throughout popular culture in literature, music, films, and television. A number of his homes are dedicated museums today. Contents Life and career Early life, military career, publishing career Death Griswold's memoir Literary styles and genres Genres, literary theory Legacy Literary influence Physics and Cosmology, Cryptography Poe and Popular Culture Poe is a character, preserved homes, landmarks, and museums, Poe Toaster Selected list of works, see also References, notes, general references, external links Life and Career Early Life he was born Edgar Poe in Boston, Massachusetts, on January 19, 1809, the second child of actress Elizabeth Arnold Hopkins Poe and actor David Poe, Jr. He had an elder brother, William Henry Leonard Poe, and a younger sister, Rosalie Poe. Edgar may have been named after a character in William Shakespeare's King Lear, a play the couple was performing in 1809. His father abandoned their family in 1810, and his mother died a year later from consumption. Poe was then taken into the home of John Allen, a successful Scottish merchant in Richard, Virginia, who dealt a variety of goods, including tobacco, cloth, wheat, tombstones, and slaves. The Allens moved as a foster family, but never formally adopted Poe, though they gave him the name Edgar Allan Poe. The Allen family had Poe baptized in the Episcopal Church in 1812. John Allen alternatively spoiled and aggressively disciplined his foster son. The family, including Poe and Allen's wife, Frances Valentine Allen, sailed to England in 1815. 
Poe attended grammar school in Irvine, Scotland, where John Allen was born, for a short period in 1815 before rejoining the family in London in 1816. He studied at a boarding school in Chelsea until the summer of 1817. He subsequently entered at the Reverend John Bransby's Manor House at Stoke Newington, then a suburb four miles, six kilometers, north of London. Poe moved back with the Allens to Richmond, Virginia in 1820. In March 1825, John Allen's uncle and business benefactor, William Galt, said to be one of the wealthiest men in Richmond, died and left Allen several acres of real estate. The inheritance was estimated at $750,000. By summer 1825, Allen celebrated his expansive wealth by purchasing a two-story brick home named Moldavia. Poe may have become engaged to Sarah Elmira Royster before he was registered at the one-year-old University of Virginia in February 1826 to study languages. The university, in its infancy, was established on the ideals of its founder, Thomas Jefferson. It had strict rules against gambling, horses, guns, tobaccos, and alcohol, but these rules were generally ignored. Jefferson had enacted a system of student self-government, allowing students to choose their own studies, make their own arrangements for boarding, and report all wrongdoing to the faculty. The unique system was still in chaos, and there was a high dropout rate. During his time there, Poe lost touch with Royster, and also became estranged from his foster father over gambling debts. Poe claimed that Allen had not given him sufficient money to register for classes, purchase texts, and procure and furnish a dormitory. Allen did send additional money and clothes, but Poe's debts increased. Poe gave up on the university after a year, and not feeling welcome in Richmond, especially when he learned that his sweetheart Royster had married Alexander Shelton, he traveled to Boston in 1827, sustaining himself with odd jobs as a clerk and newspaper writer. At some point, he started this using the pseudonym Henry Lee Renette. Military Career Unable to support himself, on May 27, 1827, Poe enlisted in the United States Army as a private. Using the name Edgar A. Perry, he claimed he was 22 years old, even though he was 18. He first served at Fort Independence in Boston Harbor for $5 a month. That same year, he released his first book, a 40-page collection of poetry, Tamerlane and Other Poems, attributed with the byline, By a Bostonian. Only 50 copies were printed, and the book received virtually no attention. Poe's regiment was posted to Fort Moultrie in Charleston, South Carolina, and traveled by ship on the brig Waltham on November 8, 1827. He was promoted to Artificer, an enlisted tradesman who prepared shells for the artillery, and his monthly pay doubled. After serving for two years and attaining the rank of Sergeant Major for Artillery, the highest rank a non-commissioned officer can achieve, Poe sought to end his five-year enlistment early. He revealed his real name and the circumstances to his commanding officer, Lieutenant Howard. Howard would only allow Poe to be discharged if he reconciled with John Allen and wrote a letter to Allen, who was unsympathetic. Several months passed and pleas to Allen were ignored. Allen may not have written Poe, even to make him aware of his foster mother's illness. Francis Allen died on February 28, 1829, and Poe visited the day after her burial. Perhaps softened by his wife's death, John Allen agreed to support Poe's attempt to be discharged in order to receive an appointment the United States Military Academy at West Point. Poe finally was discharged on April 15, 1829, after securing a replacement to finish his enlisted term for him. Before entering West Point, Poe moved back to Baltimore for a time to stay with his widowed aunt, Maria Clem, her daughter, Virginia Eliza Clem, Poe's first cousin, his brother, Henry, and his invalid grandmother, Elizabeth Cairns Poe. Meanwhile, Poe published his second book, all Araf, Tamerlane, and Minor Poems, in Baltimore, 1829. Poe traveled to West Point and was matriculated as a cadet on July 1, 1830. In October 1830, John Allen married his second wife, Louisa Patterson. The marriage, after bitter quarrels with Poe over children born to Allen out of affairs, led to the foster family finally disowning Poe. Poe decided to leave West Point by purposely getting court-martialed. 
On February 8, 1831, he was tried for gross neglect of duty and disobedience of orders for refusing to attend formations, classes, or church. Poe tacitly pled not guilty to induce mis dismissal, knowing he would be found guilty. He left for New York in February 1831 and released a third volume of poems, simply titled Poems. The book was financed with help from his fellow cadets at West Point, many of whom donated 75 cents to the cause, raising a total of $170. They may have been expecting verses similar to the satirical ones Poe had been writing about commanding officers. Printed by Alain Bliss of New York, it was labeled Second Edition, and included a page saying, To the U.S. Corps of Cadets, this volume is respectfully dedicated. The book once again reprinted the long poems Tamerlane and Al Araf, but also six previously unpublished poems, including earlier versions of To Helen, Is Raphael, and The City in the Sea. He returned to Baltimore to his aunt, brother, and cousin in March 1831. His elder brother Henry, who had been in ill health in part due to problems with alcoholism, died on August 1, 1831. Publishing Career After his brother's death, Poe began in more earnest attempts to start a career as a writer. He chose a difficult time in American publishing to do so. He was the first well-known American to try to live by writing alone, and he was hampered by a lack of international copyright law. Publishers often pirated copies of British works rather than paying for new work by Americans. The industry was also particularly hurt by the Panic of 1837. Despite a booming growth in American periodicals around this time period, fueled in part by new technology, many did not last beyond a few issues, and publishers often refused to pay their writers, or paid them much later than they promised. Poe, throughout his attempts in pursuing a successful literary career, would be forced to constantly make humiliating pleas for money and other assistance for the rest of his life. After his attempts at poetry, Poe turned his attention to prose. He placed a few stories with a Philadelphia publication and began work on his only drama, Polition. The Saturday Visitor, a Baltimore paper, awarded Poe a prize in October 1833 for his short story, M.S. Found in Bottle. The story brought him the attention of John P. Kennedy, a Baltimorean of considerable means. He helped Poe play some of his stories and introduced him to Thomas W. White, editor of the Southern Literary Messenger in Richmond. Poe became assistant editor of the periodical in August 1835. However, within a few weeks he was discharged after being found drunk repeatedly. Returning to Baltimore, Poe secretly married Virginia, his cousin, on September 22, 1835. She was 13 at the time, though she is listed on the marriage certificate as being 21. Reinstated by White, after promising good behavior, Poe went back to Richmond with Virginia and her mother. He remained at the Messenger until January 1837. During this period, its circulation increased from 700 to 3,500. He published several poems, book reviews, criticisms, and stories in the paper. On May 16, 1836, he had a second wedding ceremony in Richmond with Virginia Clem, this time in public. The narrative of Arthur Gordon Pyme was published and widely reviewed in 1838. In the summer of 1839, Poe became an assistant editor of Burton's Gentleman's Magazine. He published numerous articles, stories, and reviews, enhancing his reputation as a trenchant critic that he had established at the Southern Literary Messenger. Also in 1839, the collection Tales of the Grotesque and Arabesque was published in two volumes, though he made little money off of it and received mixed reviews. Poe left Burton's after about a year and found a position as assistant at Graham's magazine. In June 1840, Poe published a prospectus announcing his intentions to start his own journal, The Stylus. Originally, Poe intended to call the journal The Pen, as it would have been based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. In the June 6, 1840 issue of Philadelphia's Saturday Evening Post, Poe bought an advertising space for his prospectus. Prospectus of the Penn Magazine, a monthly literary review to be edited and published in the city of Philadelphia by Edgar A. Poe. The journal would never be produced before Poe's death. Around this time, he attempted to secure a position with the Tyler administration, claiming he was a member of the Whig Party. He hoped to be appointed to the Custom House in Philadelphia, with help from President Tyler's son Robert, an acquaintance of Poe's friend Frederick Thomas. 
Poe failed to show up for a meeting with Thomas to discuss the appointment in mid-September 1842, claiming to be sick, though Thomas believed he was drunk. Though he was promised an appointment, all positions were filled by others. One evening in January 1842, Virginia showed the first signs of consumption, now called tuberculosis, while singing and playing the piano. Poe described it as breaking a blood vessel in her throat. She only partially recovered. Poe began to drink more heavily under the stress of Virginia's illness. He left Graham's and attempted to find a new position for a time angling for a government post. He returned to New York, where he worked briefly at the Evening Mirror before becoming an editor of Broadway Journal and, later, sole owner. There he alienated himself from other writers by publicly accusing Henry Wadsworth Longfellow of plagiarism, though Longfellow never responded. On January 29, 1845, his poem The Raven appeared in the Evening Mirror and became a popular sensation. Though it made Poe a household name almost instantly, he was only paid $9 for its publication. The Broadway Journal failed in 1846. Poe moved to a cottage in the Fordham section of the Bronx, New York. That home, known today as the Poe Cottage, is on the southeast corner of the Grand Concourse and Kingsbridge Road. Virginia died there on January 30, 1847. Biographers and critics often suggest Poe's frequent theme of death of a beautiful woman stems from the repeated loss of women throughout his life, including his wife. Increasingly unstable from his wife's death, Poe attempted to court the poet Sarah Helen Whitman, who lived in Providence, Rhode Island. Their engagement failed, purportedly because of Poe's drinking and erratic behavior. However, there is also strong evidence that Whitman's mother intervened and did much to derail their relationship. Poe then returned to Richmond and resumed a relationship with childhood sweetheart Sarah Elmira Royster. Death. Main article. Death of Edgar Allan Poe. On October 3, 1849, Poe was found on the streets of Baltimore delirious, quote, in great distress and in need of immediate assistance, end quote, according to the man who found him, Joseph W. Walker. He was taken to the Washington College Hospital, where he died on Sunday, October 7, 1849, at 5 o'clock in the morning. Poe was never coherent long enough to explain how he came to be in this dire condition, and, oddly, was wearing clothes that were not his own. Poe was said to have repeatedly called out the name Reynolds on the night before his death, though it is unclear to whom he was referring. Some sources say Poe's final words were, Lord help my poor soul. All medical records, including the death certificate, have been lost. Newspapers at the time reported Poe's death as congestion of the brain, or cerebral inflammation, common euphemisms for death of disreputable causes such as alcoholism. However, the actual cause of death remains a mystery. From as early as 1872, cooping was commonly believed to have been the cause, and speculation included delirium tremens, heart disease, epilepsy, syphilis, meningeal inflammation, cholera, and rabies. Griswold's Memoir The day Edgar Allan Poe was buried, a long obituary appeared in the New York Tribune, signed Ludwig. It was soon published throughout the country. The piece began, quote, Edgar Allan Poe is dead. He died in Baltimore the day before yesterday. This announcement will startle many, but few will be grieved by it. Unquote. Ludwig was soon identified as Rufus Wilmot Griswold, an editor, critic, and anthologist who had borne a grudge against Poe since 1842. Griswold somehow became Poe's literary executor and attempted to destroy his enemy's reputation after his death. Rufus Griswold wrote a biography of Article of Poe called Memoir of an Author, which he included in an 1850 volume of the collected works. Griswold depicted Poe as depraved, drunk, drug-addled madman and included Poe's letters as evidence. Many of his claims were either outright lies or distorted half-truths. For example, it is now known that Poe was not a drug addict. Griswold's book was denounced by those who knew Poe well, but it became a popularly accepted one. This occurred in part because it was the only full biography available and was widely reprinted, and in part because the readers thrilled at the thought of reading works by an evil man. Letters that Griswold presented as proof of this depiction of Poe were later revealed to be forgeries. Literary Styles and Themes Genres Poe's best-known fiction works are Gothic, a genre he followed to appease the public taste. His most recurring themes deal with questions of death, including its physical signs, the effects of decomposition, concerns of premature burial, 
The Reanimation of the Dead, and Mourning. Many of his works are generally considered a part of the dark romanticism genre, a literary reaction to transcendentalism, which Poe strongly disliked. He referred to followers of the movement as Frogpondians, after the pond on Boston Common, and ridiculed their writings as metaphor-run, lapsing into obscurity for obscurity's sake, or mysticism for mysticism's sake. Poe once wrote a letter to Thomas Hawley Chivers that he did not like transcendentalists, quote, only the pretenders and sophists among them, end quote. Beyond horror, Poe also wrote satires, humor tales, and hoaxes. For comic effect, he used irony and ludicrous extravagance, often in an attempt to liberate the reader from cultural conformity. In fact, Metzengerstein, the first story that Poe is known to have published, and his first foray into horror, was originally intended as a burlesque satirizing the popular genre. Poe also reinvented science fiction, responding in his writing to emerging technologies such as hot air balloons in The Balloon Hoax. Poe wrote much of his work using themes specifically catered for mass market tastes. To that end, his fiction often included elements of popular pseudosciences such as phrenology and physiognomy. Literary Theory Poe's writing reflects his literary theories, which he presented in his criticism and also in essays such as The Poetic Principle. He disliked didactism and allegory, though he believed that meaning in literature should be an undercurrent just beneath the surface. Works with obvious meanings, he wrote, cease to be art. He believed that quality work should be brief and focus on a specific, single effect. To that end, he described that the writer should carefully calculate every sentiment and idea. In The Philosophy of Composition, an essay in which Poe describes the method in writing The Raven, he claims to have strictly followed this method. It has been questioned, however, if he really followed the system. T.S. Eliot said, quote, it is difficult for us to read that essay without reflecting that if Poe plotted out his poem with such calculation, he might have taken a little more pains over it. The result hardly does credit to the method. End quote. Biographer Joseph Wood Crutch described the essay as quote, a rather highly ingenious exercise in the art of rationalization. End quote. Legacy Literary Influence during his lifetime, Poe was most recognized as a literary critic. Fellow critic James Russell Lowell called him, quote, the most discriminating, philosophical, and fearless critic upon imaginative works who has written in America, end quote, though he questioned if he occasionally used prussic acid instead of ink. Poe was also known as a writer of fiction and became one of the first American authors of the 19th century to become more popular in Europe than in the United States. Poe particularly respected France, in part due to early translations by Charles Baudelaire. Baudelaire's translations became definitive renditions of Poe's work throughout Europe. Poe's early detective fiction tales, starring the fictitious C. August Dupin, laid the groundwork for future detectives in literature. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle said, quote, each of Poe's detective stories is a root from which a whole literature has developed. Where was the detective story until Poe breathed the breath of life into it? End quote. The mystery writers of America have named their awards for excellence in the genre as Edgars. Poe's work also influenced science fiction, notably Jules Verne, who wrote a sequel to Poe's novel, The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pyme of Nantucket, called The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pyme, the Sphinx de Glass. Science fiction author H.G. Wells noted, Pyme tells what a very intelligent mind could imagine about the South Polar region a century ago. Like many famous artists, Poe's works have spawned innumerable imitators. One interesting trend among imitators of Poe, however, has been claimed by clairvoyants or psychics to be channeling poems from Poe's spirit. One of the most notable of these was Lizzie Doten, who in 1863 published Poems from the Inner Life, in which she claimed to have received new compositions by Poe's spirit. The compositions were reworkings of famous Poe poems, such as The Bells, but which reflected a new, positive outlook. Even so, Poe has not received only praise. William Butler Yeats was generally critical of Poe, and denounced him as vulgar. 
transcendentalist Ralph Waldo Emerson reacted to the raven by saying, quote, I see nothing in it, end quote, and derisively referred to Poe as, quote, the jingle man, end quote. Aldous Huxley wrote that Poe's writings, quote, fall into vulgarity, end quote, by being too poetical, the equivalent of wearing a diamond ring on every finger. Physics and Cosmology Eureka, a prose poem, an essay written in 1848, included a cosmological theory that presaged the Big Bang theory by 80 years, as well as the first plausible solution to Olber's paradox. Poe eschewed the scientific method in Eureka, and instead wrote from pure intuition. For this reason, he considered it a work of art, not science, but insisted it was still true and considered it to be his career masterpiece. Even so, Eureka is full of scientific errors. In particular, Poe's suggestions oppose Newtonian principles regarding the density and rotation of planets. Cryptography Poe had a keen interest in the field of cryptography. He had placed a notice of his abilities in the Philadelphia paper Alexander's Weekly, Express Messenger, inviting submissions of ciphers, which he proceeded to solve. In July 1841, Poe had published an essay called A Few Words of Secret Writing in Graham's Magazine. Realizing the public interest in the topic, he wrote The Gold Bug, incorporating ciphers as part of the story. Poe's success in cryptography relied not so much on his knowledge of the field, his method was limited to simple substitution cryptogram, as on his knowledge of the magazine and newspaper culture. His keen analytical abilities, which were so evident in his detective stories, allowed him to see that the general public was largely ignorant of the methods by which a simple substitution cryptogram can be solved, and he used this to his advantage. The sensation Poe created with his cryptography stunt played a major role in popularizing cryptograms in newspapers and magazines. Poe had an influence on cryptography beyond increasing public inf interest in his lifetime. William Friedman, America's foremost cryptologist, was heavily influenced by Poe. Friedman's initial interest in cryptography came from reading The Gold Bug as a child, interest he later put to work deciphering Japan's P-U-R-P-L-E code during World War II. Poe in Popular Culture Poe as a Character Main Articles Edgar Allan Poe in Popular Culture and Edgar Allan Poe in Television and Film the historical Edgar Allan Poe has appeared as a fictionalized character often representing the mad genius or tormented artist and exploiting his personal struggles. Many such depictions also blend in with characters from his stories, suggesting that Poe and his characters share identities. Often, fictional depictions of Poe use his mystery-solving skills in such novels as The Poe Shadow by Matthew Pearl. Preserved Homes, Landmarks, and Museums no childhood home of Poe is still standing, including Allen's family, Moldavia Estate. The oldest standing home in Richmond, the Old Stone House, is in use as the Edgar Allan Poe Museum, though Poe never lived there. The collection includes many items Poe used during his time with the Allen family, and also features several rare first printings of Poe works. The dorm room Poe is believed to have used while studying at the University of Virginia in 1826, is preserved and available for visits. Its upkeep is now overseen by a group of students and staff known as the Raven Society. The earliest surviving home in which Poe lived is in Baltimore, preserved as the Edgar Allan Poe House and Museum. Poe is believed to have lived in the home at age 23 when he first lived with Maria Clem and Virginia, as well as his grandmother and possibly his brother, William Henry Leonard Poe. It is open to the public and is also the home of the Edgar Allan Poe Society. Of the several homes that Poe, his wife Virginia, and his mother-in-law Maria rented in Philadelphia, only the last house has survived. The Spring Garden Home, where the author lived in 1843 to 1844, is today preserved by the National Park Service as the Edgar Allan Poe National Historic Site. Poe's final home is preserved as the Edgar Allan Poe Cottage in the Bronx, New York. Other Poe landmarks include the building in the Upper West Side, where Poe temporarily lived when he first moved to New York. A plaque suggests that Poe wrote The Raven here. In Boston, a plaque hangs near where the building where Poe was born once stood. Believed to have been located at 62 Carver Street, now Charles Street, 
the plaque is possibly in an incorrect location. The bar in which legend says Poe was last seen drinking before his death still stands in Fells Point in Baltimore, Maryland. Now known as the horse you came in on, local lore insists that a ghost they call Edgar haunts the rooms above. Poe Toaster Main article, Poe Toaster Adding to the mystery surrounding Poe's death, an unknown visitor affectionately referred to as the Poe Toaster has paid homage to Poe's grave every year since 1849. As the tradition has been carried on for more than 50 years, it is likely that the Poe Toaster is actually several individuals. However, the tribute is always the same. Every January 19, in the early hours of the morning, the man makes a toast of Cognac to Poe's original grave marker and leaves three roses. Members of the Edgar Allan Poe Society in Baltimore have helped in protecting this tradition for decades. On August 15, 2007, Sam Porpora, a former historian of the Westminster Church in Baltimore where Poe was buried, claimed that he had started the tradition in the 1960s. The claim that the tradition began in 1949, he said, was a hoax in order to raise money and enhance the profile of the church. His story has not been confirmed, and some details he has given to the press have been pointed out as factually inaccurate. Selected list of works. Main article. Bibliography of Edgar Allan Poe. Tales. Berenice, The Black Cat, The Cask of Amontillado, The Fall of the House of Usher, The Gold Bug, Hot Frog, Ligea, The Man of the Crowd, The Mask of the Red Death, The Murders in the Rue Morgue, The Pit and the Pendulum, The Purloined Letter, The Telltale Heart, The Oblong Box, The Premature Burial, The Oval Portrait. Poetry. A Dream Within a Dream, Annabelle Lee, The Bells, The City in the Sea, The Conqueror Worm, El Dorado, The Haunted Palace, Lenore, The Raven, Ulalum. Other Works The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pyme of Nantucket, 1838, Poe's Only Complete Novel. The Balloon Hoax, 1844, A Journalistic Hoax Printed as a True Story. The Philosophy of Composition, 1846, Essay. Eureka, a Prose Poem, 1848, Essay. See also, Edgar Allan Poe and Music, USS E.A. Poe, IX-103, List of Coupled Cousins. This has been a reading of the Wikipedia article, Edgar Allan Poe.